Welcome back to another screencast about functions. And this is another example that's going to instantiate some of the basic definitions about functions that we saw earlier. This example is going to involve integer congruence. So let's jump right into it. So this process I'm defining is called f, and it takes integers and turns them into other integers. Right now, again, I have not told you the rule. So right now, I couldn't say anything about this function until I've specified what the rule is. So let's do that. So the rule here, how I'm going to specify this, is that when I take an input n, and run it through my process, what I'm going to return is n squared mod 4. That is, I'm going to square in and then look at its least non-negative residue modulo 4. So that will certainly be another uh, integer uh, for sure. And uh, let's see how this works. So this is a process that's fairly well defined. Let's tick through our usual questions about this. Is the input set specified? Yeah, I told you what that is. We're taking integers as our inputs. Is the output set specified? Did I tell you what that is? Yes, that's going to be integers coming out of this function. And is the process specified? Did I tell you what the function actually does? Yes. Uh, we take the, the an input and return its square mod 4. Does every input actually have an output? Yes. There's no, this is more of a formula and there's no uh, integer that makes that formula to simply not compute. Does every valid input have only one output? And that's one we have to sort of think about for a second. And the answer here is going to be yes as well. Uh, given a single integer, first of all, if I square it, it doesn't square into two different different things. Remember, we're trying to avoid situations where the input splits into two different things. That doesn't happen with squaring, and so it's not going to happen if I square and then reduce mod 4 either. So every valid input has only one, exactly one output here. Now that it's a function, let's talk about its domain and codomain. Again, this is very easy if you just look back at where the function is defined. The, codo the domain is here, and the codomain is here. So both of those, in this case, are the set of all integers. Now, again, we're going to have a question later on about, OK, what's the difference between the codomain and the range of this function? Can every integer actually appear as an output of this function? That's a different question, though. Uh, that's a question about the range. Uh, so here, the domain and codomain are specified to be the entire set of integers for now. Now, uh, let's talk about this function, how it behaves. And this is important because we want to get a feel, especially when I'm working with a formula, for how uh, the function behaves and operates here. So let's try some numbers and just run them through. Uh, let's make a little table for that just to see what happens here. And let's go with, say, 0 and 1, 5, 10. Maybe choose a negative number, like negative 3, just to try a few various outputs here. And so what I'm going to try to do is compute n squared mod 4. I really think of that as almost two steps to this. So let's do n squared first and then reduce mod 4. Well, 0 squared is certainly 0, and 0 mod 4 is 0 itself. 1 squared is 1, and 1 mod 4 is 1. 5 squared is 25, and looking at the non-negative, least non-negative residue of 25 mod 4, that's just asking, how, what's the remainder when I divide uh, 25 by 4. 4 goes into 25 six times with a remainder of 1, so the output is 1 there. 10, okay, its square is 100, and uh, that 100, so I'll write that here, and 100 mod 4, of course, is 0, because uh, 4 divides 100 evenly. Negative 3, its square is positive 9, and a 9 mod 4 is 1. Now, it's interesting that we only got zeros and 1s out here, and we'll have to think about that in a little while, but at least we understand now how images and how uh, certain things behave here. Uh, what about pre-images of points in the codomain? So let's just start pulling uh, integers out of the codomain, out of the receiving end of this function, and see if I could put something in. Certainly, uh, I think we know that 0 and 1 have pre-images. Okay, uh, I could fill in the blanks here and get uh, find points in the domain that get sent to 0 and get sent to 1. And there are a lot of different choices. For example, 0 will work for it to get sent to 0, and so does 10. And uh, 1 gets sent to 1, but so does 5 also gets sent to 1. It seems like there are a lot of possibly infinitely many points uh, that are pre-images of 0, and there are infinitely many pre-images for 1 as well. Now, what about something like 2? Uh, does that have a pre-image? We certainly didn't see 2 show up as an actual output, so it makes us wonder if uh, there really is anything at all that I could plug in for f to give me 2. Now, we're going to leave that question unanswered for right now, but at least we see you know, the question about pre-images uh, involves going to the codomain, into the full set of integers first, and then working backwards to try to find points in the domain that I would put in to get that point. So 0 and 1 definitely have lots of pre-images. 2, we're not so sure about. And I think anything negative would not, because we have to square the number first and then reduce mod 4. 
Now let's get on to that question about what are the set of all actual outputs of this function. Well certainly 0 and 1 are among that set. I mean we see that because we, we made the table over here and saw uh, that 0 and 1 occur as outputs here. Now what else could be outputs here? Well think about how the uh, function is defined. f of n is n squared mod 4. Now since I'm reducing mod 4 the division algorithm gives me only a few possible inputs. Uh, the only things that I can get out of reducing something mod 4 or 0, 1, 2, or 3. Those are the only possible remainders here. So I know that, for example, the number 22 cannot be an output of this function because I cannot uh, get 22 as a remainder if I divide something by 4. So that uh, makes us think, well, maybe there are not a lot of outputs to this at all. 0 and 1 certainly are actual outputs. What about 2 or 3? Could I get outputs uh, for uh, could those occur as outputs of this function? It turns out the answer is no, and I'm just going to state this as a lemma that uh, you can prove on your own if you want to. And uh, that lemma just says that uh, for every integer n, uh, n squared is uh, going to be congruent to either 0 mod 4 or 1 mod 4. You can run through the table that we saw over here uh, with many other different values of the inputs and you'll find very quickly that no matter what you put in here, uh, your outputs are always going to be 0 or 1. You never pick up a 2, you never pick up a 3. And that might make you think, well gosh, maybe that's true in general. And that's what this lemma is saying here. So I encourage you and invite you to prove that lemma. And that would say that, that, would say that no matter what I put in for n, the square is always going to be 0 or 1 mod 4. So the upshot of this is that the range of this function uh, is just the set consisting of 0 and 1, just a two-element set. So although the codomain is a gigantic infinite set of all integers, the, the range of this function only consists of two things, 0 and 1. And we only get that by playing with the problem again, our theme throughout this course. We understand problems by playing with them. So that's another example. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching.